So in this video, I wanted to give you a quick overview of my new Ender 5 Plus and give you my first impressions of the machine um, and talk about its, uh, its good qualities and also some issues that I ran into with it. So let's start off with the issues I ran into. So I bought this machine off of Amazon directly from Creality and when it came in, um, the connectors, I noticed as I was assembling, the connectors from the stepper motors, let's see if I can show you. And you can't see because the connectors are in, but these connectors built into the stepper motors, some of them actually were cracked. Um, I was able to fit the Molex connectors on there, but uh, it, it was still a little upsetting that I spent a couple hundred dollars on this machine and, and the, the connectors to the stepper motors were a little bit messed up. But that wasn't a huge deal. You know, I, I uh, shrugged that one off and then I continued to build the machine. The next issue I ran into during the build was this... Um, I don't know what to call it, the, the umbilical, I don't know. But it basically, it goes to the, the print head, and this holds your control wiring for your stepper motor, for your heater, for your thermistor, and it also holds your filament, um, PTF tubing. And I ran into huge issues with this just dragging on the build plate. Um, they didn't really give you a good direction or way to mount this to the frame of the CNC, or I'm sorry, of the 3D printer. Uh, I've got CNC on the brain. Of the 3D printer. Um, so I luckily had some of these brackets lying around, these aluminum extrusion bracket accessories, and I was able to throw those up and use some zip ties and get it to work. But again, I think they could have designed that better. Um, after everything was assembled, I got excited, turned it on, and um, the control panel uh, turned on, but the actual touch screen was dead. I couldn't get it to work. Um, I opened up their, you know, control box. Turned out that they had some bad terminations from their power supply to the control board. Uh, so I had to fix that myself, which that really started making me a little upset. Um, so took care of that one myself. Uh, after I did that, uh, plugged it all back in got it running um, and it just it would home and some of the steps steppers motors would work um, but the SD card wasn't registering with the 3d printer at all like I couldn't I would slice something in Cura put it in the 3d printer it wouldn't work I would then take the same SD card bring it over to my uh, trusty Ender 3 and it would show up just fine um, I couldn't figure out what the issue was so I contacted Creality. Um, they were actually really responsive. Uh, once I explained the issue, sent them a few videos, um, they were pretty responsive, sending me a new control board. I put in the new control board uh, a week later once it arrived. Um, I was still kind of running into the same issue. I'd put in the SD card, but it wouldn't show up on the, uh, the touch screen as a file that I could print. I contacted Creality yet again, and then that's when they explained that, um, and I, I don't know off the top of my head the exact reasons, but they said that a file for the Ender 5 Plus has to be less than, I think it was 16 characters and couldn't have any special characters in the name, um, which I didn't know. So, you know, my original control board may have been fine. Um, I don't know. I, I wish they would have told me that to begin with. Um, so eventually got it up and running. I uh, started printing with it, uh, and it's been printing pretty well. Uh, I did run into a few issues where it needed uh, power cycled to it a few times, actually, but that's not a huge deal. Uh, another thing that I ran into that I didn't like about this is the filament runout sensor, which is there in the back with the, the blue light. It works great. It stops the 3D printer whenever the filament runs out, but the problem is by the time it stops the 3D printer, the filament's already up into the Bowden tube. So what are you gonna do? You gotta turn off the printer anyways and stop the print and pull it all out. It, it doesn't allow you to change the filament like you're supposed to. So again, probably a minor fix. I can just relocate that filament sensor, but it would have been great if they would have thought that out in the design phase. Um, other than that though, I, I got the cure settings running for it. I'm using a 0.8 millimeter nozzle. I use this for a lot of custom bracketry that I design and it's really good for just knocking things out pretty quick. Uh, the accuracy of it's pretty good. Um, I ran a couple um, of the calibration cubes, the XYZ calibration cubes. Everything looks pretty solid. 
Um, got the Cure Profile working really well for a 0.8 millimeter nozzle. One thing I did do is I built this enclosure for it, and if you're using this 3D printer in any place that has, you know, a draft or a little bit chilly, I highly suggest one. Since this has such a build, large build plate, um, I was having a lot of warping issues. So I, I fabbed up this enclosure really quick, nothing fancy, um, and then I kept having to get down on the floor basically to use the touchscreen because it's originally mounted down here. Um, I just got tired of that. So I moved the control box, for lack of a better words, to the side. So uh, as far away from the bottom as I could while keeping all the stepper motor leads original. Um, and then I extended the touch screen to up here so I can access it. And then I 3D printed this bracket to go onto it. And let's see if I can do this one handed. Whenever the lid's shut, you know, you can still see the touch screen and, and everything. So that's been a nice little change. Uh, other than that, though, I've got it running. It's not bad. Uh, it's been working pretty well. So I'm going to stop talking about it and I'm going to print something and I'll give you a quick time lapse of the print and then I'll show you the accuracy afterwards. Okay, so now that it's done printing, let's take a look at it. Uh, this is the calibration cube. It's normally supposed to be 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters. Um, I scaled it to 200% just because it's a bigger 3D printer and it's point eight, printing with a 0.8 millimeter nozzle. Um, so I decided to scale it up. So uh, the printer settings on this, I'm using 40% infill. I'm using the standard Cura uh, Ender 5 um, profile but I did tweak a few settings it's printing at a 0.64 layer height I've got I think three walls um, three top layers two bottom layers um, and I increased retraction a bit and as you can see it looks pretty good um, is it gonna win any awards no nope. but uh, I don't need it to it just needs to be able to print brackets um, so that looks good let's get out the calipers and see what it's supposed to be so um, it should be 40 millimeters I believe so let's take a look and that's pretty good. So we got 40 millimeters there. We've got 40 millimeters there. Should have 40 millimeters here. Yeah, so it's calibrated really pretty well. As you can see, everything's 40 millimeters. Um, so in summary, I have to say that the Ender 5 Plus um, is really a pretty good machine once you get it up and running. Uh, getting it up and running, at least for me, was a bit of an issue. And and I have to say, to Creality's defense, when I did contact them, they were very responsive about getting me assistance. But um, with a brand new machine, I shouldn't have ran into this many issues. So uh, to summarize, I would say if you're going to buy your first 3D printer, uh, get like an Ender 3. Those things are bulletproof. I love my Ender 3. Um, it's, it's a lot more easy going right out of the box. Um, if you're a seasoned 3D printer or if you're a good tinkerer, you know, the Ender 5 Plus, it's still a really good printer once you get it up and running. So um, hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you learned something. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments, and hopefully I can answer them for you. Thank you very much for watching.